Welcome back. We are doing uh, another session in Colossians and we are looking today at Colossians 2, especially verse 16 to 18. But we're going to start from verse 13 to get the context right. And this is a really, really important, again, Colossians is so fundamental to our understanding of Christian living. So Paul writes to this church who was already sold out to love God and to love all the saints. He, they were so different from Ephesus who eventually ended up lukewarm, which was nearby. But to be honest with you, the, the key issue here is, is that Paul is talking about deep, deep spiritual relationship. So let's read. Verse 13, Colossians chapter 2. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive in Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. And now the important bit. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And Christ himself is actually that reality of all of the things that were foreshadowed in the Old Testament. Do not let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or worship of angels, saying they have had visions about all about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud, and they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body. Right, so, the first thing to realize is, is that God cancelled out all our sin. We have a clean conscience before God because Jesus once and for all paid the price. Paul stressed this so importantly. Please hear the truth. In Christ, once and for all, our sin has been taken care of. He nailed it to the cross. There is no more written accusation against us in any way, shape or form. Secondly, the enemy trying to dissuade us from the truth that Christ is alive in us now and that Holy Spirit is in an authentic relationship within us now, leading us in all truth, guiding us. So important. We must grasp the truth of our authentic relationship in Christ Jesus with Father God through Holy Spirit. It is the key to our Christian living. And once we grasp that, once we understand that, no one has the right to judge your actions, or as the Syriac version put it, to trouble you if your heart is right with God, if you're alive in Holy Spirit, being led by Him in all things. And most often, these people, by what the enemy wants to achieve, will use the law to try and condemn you. And the people who are being used by the enemy are being instigated by the enemy to do so in your life. And because the enemy knows the law well, he will use it to instigate such people to become judgmental and legalistic in your life. Ooh, but you shouldn't be doing that. You know, if you're a Christian, ooh, you know. So Paul's statement here is a key verse in every Christian's life. Please hear the truth today. Jesus came to set you free from the obligations of the law. And this statement, this very, very important statement, that the Old Testament has shadows of things to come or that it, it for in type or anti-type, it is telling us what was to come, the literal explaining the spiritual. And it's built, therefore, on Romans 1 verse 20, that the things seen are but templates for the things not seen. This is not our eternal habitation. Earthly imagery is used to explain heavenly and eternal realities to us. So we can't get stuck on 
physical, earthly demonstration of the eternal spiritual truths. Paul then highlights whether you fast or whether you don't fast, whether you, whatever you eat or whatever you drink or whatever you venerate as a holy day or not, which he explains better in Romans 13, new moon ceremonies, festivals and Sabbaths in particular. These were mentioned. He mentions those, but it's actually all of the law. These things are now personal between you and Holy Spirit. Father God said in the new covenant, he will write his laws on our hearts. Therefore, we must rely on that relationship through our conscience, intuition, and close fellowship with Holy Spirit to lead us into the fullness of what God intends for us within the new blood covenant. Paul elaborates on the whole the issue of a clean conscience before God. And he summarized it as such. One should not become a stumbling block to someone else. So even if you do know that things are allowed for you, if you're a stumbling block to another Christian, then please try not to be a stumbling block. Unless that person is totally deluded. If you can cope with your conscience, then let it be between you and the Lord. But don't become a stumbling block or an offense if you can help it. He's, Paul said, as far as it was possible, I live with a clean conscience before God and before me. So, that's the first bit. And it summarized also that if we walk in faith, being led by Holy Spirit, all things are permissible. Ooh. All things are permissible. But not all things are expedient or edifying. Stay within that close relationship and your boundaries and your signposting will be perfect. But you will have more freedom to enjoy more of what God has for you in this life than living with a lot, lots of rules and regulations that actually... God's not even in it because we're using a perfect measure of the Old Testament and trying to keep to the old law when actually Holy Spirit wants to lead us moment by moment, day by day. So walk with a clean conscience before men and God as far as it is possible. And if we look at what Paul was referring to, the three main feasts or ceremonial celebrations were the feasts of Passover, tabernacles and Pentecost and these were three grand festivals the feast of first fruit or in gathering harvest the feast of unleavened bread and the feast of trumpets for instance as well as the day of atonement and the religious new year would also have been included in this these are all shadows which find their fulfillment in Christ the writer of the book of Hebrews also explains the Sabbath in terms of its fulfillment in Christ in the Lord no more works you're not saved by works don't try to work for to, to, to please God in terms of works rest in him let him guide you let him be the fulfillment of your salvation of your redemption justification and glorification rest in the complete work of God of Christ the word to tell us die that means it is paid it is finished it is over all that has been needed for us to live godly lives has been fulfilled. Just follow Holy Spirit in your life. Stay in close proximity with the presence of God enveloping you in your relationship with Him. Remember, it's you were saved by grace, not of works. Saved by grace, lest any man should boast. Now, in this whole concept of shadows, we can add the offerings. Because Paul refers to the burnt offering as a free will offering in Romans 12 as 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, your bodies as a living sacrifice or burnt offering. Now, instead of a lamb, you're actually presenting yourself as a lamb to God. So now we find the fulfillment of that shadow in our devotion to God. In Christ Jesus because he was the lamb that was originally sacrificed once and for all the perfect lamb and this reference should also include include the three tithes that's already done now the perfect law is to hear what Christ says to us and do it 
free will when, 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 when we add to what he's asking us to give. And that's not just finances. We're talking about all of our life, time, worship, all of it. God wants all of you, not, not some of you. <laughs> so the substance in, or reality is found in that authentic, dynamic relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit indwelling us. He is our counselor, advocate, and helper. Anything you do because of regulation or rule, I would question. I'm not saying that God does not have rules. God is not a God of chaos. But it's actually obeying His commandments as He speaks to us in every single situation. Now I'm ready to only do what the Father tells me to do. To only say what I hear the Father tells me to say. Even though I can say a lot of truths. It is what is applicable in this moment of time that will glorify Him and that will make people see that the living God is alive in and through me. Jesus came to deliver us from the obligations of the law and we are to operate under the law of the Spirit. They that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And He has promised us that we have received the anointing and He will guide us in all truth, love and righteousness. But the enemy will try and sway you back to the law because if you're under the law, you'll be in bondage. You'll sit there with a calculator at the end of the month or you'll think, oh, but I didn't go to church or, oh, you know, I, I didn't keep that. Oh, I shouldn't be eating this, you know. And so we negate the grace that Christ has given us. Interesting, interestingly, it is a sinful, off-the-mark mindset that will eventually give us an evil conscience. In other words, we'll always say, what have I done wrong? What, have I, what if this is wrong? What if that's wrong? An evil conscience. When you should have a clean conscience that you know that everything is paid for. There is no railing accusation against you. You can follow Holy Spirit wholeheartedly without any conviction of sin from the enemy or the world. You only need to be convicted by Holy Spirit. And if we have an evil conscience, it will make us self-righteous, proud, and proud, filled with pride. And such a mind will lead us to a performance-driven Christian lifestyle rather than being the wife, the child, or the slave to the one who is love and who lives inside of us. That reminds us that the Church of Colossae was all about that personal relationship with God and the love he instilled in them for him and for the other saints. That is it. Almighty Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, thank you for the immense freedom I enjoy in you. Holiness is always fun with you. Holiness is natural for the one who is in love with the one who is holy. Holy Spirit, transform me. Sanctify me in the joy of salvation. For you continually draw me nearer and nearer to you, my beloved Lord and God and husband, in Jesus' name.